AW5 Forever has great gameplay and a ton of potential, but the problem is despite all that, it largely feels like an unfinished game. And it can feel very frustrating at launch because you know what it's capable of, but then you get to the story mode, the creator wrestler, and the mini games, and you're left wondering what keeps me coming back. But I do want to make very clear the gameplay is awesome. I think when many of us think about professional wrestling nowadays, the three letters that come to mind are WWE, and it's been like that for decades. And if you're like me, you grew up playing many of these awesome games on the Nintendo 64 with games like No Mercy, WrestleMania 2000. The WWE games definitely took a shift. I love games like uh, Day of Reckoning, SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, WWE 2K14, but then afterwards, they definitely wanted to have a more simulation style uh, gameplay. But for many years, people would just post on forums, when are we gonna get a sequel to WWF No Mercy? When they announced All Elite Wrestling, and you have people like Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks that are big gamers, my first question was, will this eventually lead to a classic style wrestling game? And today, I can say that not only was the answer yes, and not only did the game finally come out with some retro gameplay that keeps things simple, but as you keep playing, you realize this game's uh, definitely a lot more complex than we all initially thought. So my name is Juan, and today I'll be giving my review, my perspective of AW Fight Forever after playing the game for about 10 hours. For context, I played the game on PC, in both medium and high settings. I was provided a review copy, but all of the opinions are my own. Nobody's reviewing this. This is just a wrestling fan that wanted to play a wrestling game. The thing that you really wanna know is, is the game worth buying? And to me, the answer is yes, if you really wanna focus on the gameplay. And I think that's what most of us cared about, right? Because you can sprinkle in story mode. Even the WWE games have a lot of incredible features, but the gameplay is something that left a lot to be desired for some people. And just so you know, I actually bought the latest WWE game. I've been playing it for the past couple of months and I love my time with it. I really do think it's one of the best games in recent years. So I love the fact that we have WWE, AW, both with their own niche, their own concept from the entrances to the camera angle, to even the graphics. It's it's more of a cartoony style aesthetic that I know a lot of people don't love. For me, it's it's give or take. I think there's some inconsistencies when you look at characters like, uh, like Kenny Omega, and then you look at Darby Allen, who looks more like himself, and Kenny looks kind of like an action figure in a weird way. But really, once the, the match starts and I hit, I press that run button, yes, there's some differences going back to the days of the N64, but it felt familiar. And as I kept playing the game, I realized just how fluid it is. Every character has weight to it, every punch, every kick. The lighter cruiserweight characters are gonna act faster, their moveset is gonna be quicker, but then you have much bigger characters like Luchasaurus, and eventually you get guys like Paul White, Brody Lee, and you feel that difference. And it's nice that it's accessible, but it can also be as complicated as you want it to be with the wrestling chain mechanics, with the difficulty, with the counter mechanics, which even going back to No Mercy, you have the grapple one, and then you have the strike one. You can build up the signature uh, meter, and then you can hit your signature move, and it feels good. The animation is awesome. Then you have your special, and you have characters like Hangman Adam Page, who I actually used through my first uh, run through of the story mode, which We'll talk about that in a little bit. And hitting the buckshot Larry of actually getting over to one of the sides of the ring, getting to the apron and doing the slingshot and hitting the clothesline is so freaking rewarding, people. Another character that I love playing as is Darby Allen. I think he has one of the most fun movesets uh, in the game and hitting the coffin drop, hitting that code red and everything, just everything feels not just like the wrestler and the character that you watch on TV, but even if you strip that down and you told your friend, hey, you wanna play an action game? It's, it's like this wrestling thing. You give them the controller and they're gonna have a fun time. And I think wrestling games struggle with that for many years. And you can have fun with ringside, breaking the barricade. You can go on top of the stage and actually break part of that. And it just feels really nice, especially when you put in weapons into the mix. And some of the weapons are great. Most of them just kind of feel like they, they put them in there for the sake of entertainment. But then you have the uh, exploding barbed wire death match, which for a non-wrestling fan has to be very, very confusing, but that's there. And even though it's like 
kind of simple. It's nice that they actually have that option. Now getting to the negative sides of this, you do tag matches and they to me have the same problem that No Mercy did, which is it's just not fun to want to pin somebody, but then depending on the AI to interrupt the other person that's going to try to break the cover. And the same thing happens with Fatal 4-Way matches. And that's why for, for me in general, and you'll see this in the gameplay, one-on-one -on -one matches are freaking awesome. Triple threat matches are damn fun. Anything more than uh, three characters on screen, to me, it just became a chore of just like, okay, well, I gotta hit the signature, then I gotta whip you outside. Something that I also wish would be better are the tables. I could just talk about that, or I could show you this and hoping that they patch this, that they update it, because it is just not fun to use. You can literally walk over to a table and it falls. Like, I don't know where they buy these tables from. You don't have a cage match. You don't have other things. And even as I'm recording this, people are leaking out things and features, even online game modes that were not available at the time that we played this, which from a marketing standpoint, I don't remember the last time a game came out and it's like, oh, here's a, a, an additional game mode. And just tackling the graphics and eventually the presentation of the game. This is what really rubbed people the wrong way. To me, I like it. I like the, the concept of it. I think the execution is very inconsistent. You look at some characters like MJF and they look like cartoon version of themselves, not in a bad way. But then you look at a Darby Allen and it looks more like Darby Allen. So I wish it was more consistent in the graphical department is what I'm trying to say. And this is where we now talk about everything else. And it's definitely a mixed bag when it comes to the features and the presentation. So let's talk about the roster. It's very inconsistent in not just who's included, but which version of them is actually in the game. You have somebody like Luchasaurus that looks like the uh, babyface good guy type Luchasaurus with the white outfit, but he's got his evil villainous music. You have Chris Statlander who is uh, reverted back to her original design. She, she's like two gimmicks back in this game. But then you have people like Adam Cole who came into the company way after. But then you have things like of the Dark Order, Anna Jay and John Silver are the ones in the game. Not Evil Uno. It's a little confusing, but they did say from day one that their idea is to not put out sequels, but to expand on this game. So it'll be interesting to see not just how much they expand the roster, but how they update the roster over time. And now let's talk about the story mode. Initially, they just build it as it's kind of like No Mercy. I didn't like it. I'm, I'm just going to be straight up because I began to see a lot of flaws. I initially played as Adam Page. You start out in a casino battle royale. Then you get into a storyline with Dustin Rhodes. I do like the fact that you can win or lose any of the matches and they do deviate the story. So your experience may be somewhat different, but then I start to play as Darby Allen. And then I go into a casino battle royale, and then I go into a storyline with Dustin Rhodes. Then I choose another character, and I also begin in the battle royale, and I also begin in the gym, and I chose another character, and another one, and I'm like, my biggest complaints from this game are multi-band matches. And you start the story mode with a battle royale, then you get like a single match, but then you get into these odd tag team matches, and I'm just like, dude, you could not, for me, for me, your experience may vary. You cannot turn me off any more from the story mode than by doing this. And then they have little features in there, like uh, you can work out and build up your stats and things like that. Problem is, all of it seems like such an afterthought. You can go sightseeing and they are literally images with the wrestlers up front. It looks so low budget, ridiculously low budget. Like some of the pictures they put in time selecting, others it feels like they chose it two days before the game came out. And I'm sorry, it is inexcusable. For me, do not get this game for the story mode. Get it for the gameplay and then every now and then get in there for a little variety. So I'm recording this part of the video after the game's already out. And that's why I decided to play a little bit of the online because beforehand I can find anybody to play with. And so far it runs pretty good. Played two matches. The first one I got destroyed. Uh, so maybe there's not so much gameplay, but the one that I did win, I did record. It was Darby Allen against Darby Allen. You wanna know who won people? I'll give you a hint. They like coffins. Yes, 
I got my first online win. And I do think it's cool that the win-loss record is actually tied to you playing online, so that's cool. Um, so far, it does seem to be fairly decent. Uh, so the, if the online continues to work well, I'm actually pretty excited long-term because it's one of the main things that I wanted going in. Create stuff. So create a wrestler, create an arena. We've been spoiled by WWE. This is where we have to kind of look at things from an individual thought process because WWE games are fantastic. They are unbelievable nowadays with creation. You can make anybody. Here you can put on t-shirts. Also, the story mode. Everybody wears a black t-shirt. Can we talk about that? Like, come on, it is just weird that you can't even have them wear their own branded shirt. That, that once again, an afterthought. Anyway, back to this, the creator wrestler, you can technically create somebody. The options are very limited. Based on what we've seen, it does seem like they're gonna add more moves and maybe some more clothing options. So create an arena is there as well. You can change out the textures, a couple of the things. And at least that's an option if you want like a darker mat and things like that. But overall, once again, not a feature that you should get this game for. And last, we gotta talk about the mini games, which when they were first announced, they definitely became a controversial topic. They are like Mario Party with wrestling characters, but not nearly as memorable. They're not like Pokemon Stadium, that a lot of people would play the mini games in that and other games because they were just really good. I don't ever see myself saying, hey, you know what? I'm gonna turn on AW Fight Forever and play some mini games because it is on the main menu. So they do expect you to go back. They are gonna add more. Some of them are cool. Some of them are just, eh, I would have devoted more time to the story mode. I really would have anything to make that because I think the story mode long-term is what was gonna give this game legs. They actually keep track of who you've beaten the story mode with and without. And for me, I'm like, what is, what is the reason? What is the incentive aside from a trophy or from an achievement or something? But despite the negative things, AW Fight Forever, without question, is worth purchasing. Not just for the sake of supporting a new company and supporting a new initiative that will lead to healthy competition. The foundation of this game is phenomenal. And if they keep building upon that and eventually patch out or update or just add more to the things that I complained about, I still see myself playing this game for a very long time, especially if the online's good. I would have loved to have had a cage match and other things like that, but I think that maybe will come uh, over time. So I would love to get your reaction, your perspective about AW5 Forever, whether it is because you've played it or you've seen a lot of other videos like this one, because uh, it really is helpful. So if you like what I do, please consider subscribing, supporting the channel by sharing all these videos. And yeah, um, I don't put out videos specifically every week, but whenever I make them, I make them with love. That's a beautiful way to end the video, people. I love all of you. Take care.